back here live in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com, all the angle on tech. Uh, we have SiliconAngle.com, DevOpsAngle.com, ServicesAngle.com, and we are covering the emerging tech scene and we're live in San Francisco at the Node Summit Conference. It's the inaugural event where uh, Node.js is uh, really growing like crazy. This is day two. Day two is the Node Jam, and the Node Jam is where all the startups come out who are hacking with Node, uh, demonstrate their apps, get some funding, uh, impress the judges. Naval Ravikant from AngelList is emceeing the event, and it's just a great day, a lot of energy. Yesterday was day one. Go to siliconangle.tv to see the highlights we did yesterday live here at theCUBE which is our flagship telecast. We go to the events and extract the signal from the noise and share that with you. Um, right now I'm here with a startup called Cloudin and uh, Sam Bisbee, who's uh, from Massachusetts, and uh, Rich Levin, Dawson investor, uh, a friend of mine, so uh, congratulations to get him to write a check. Thank he's you a, very much. He's a powerful, connected, cool investor. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, you guys are down there also with a table. You guys are growing, you're profitable. You got some fresh financing uh, to expand. Um, tell us about what Cloudin's doing right now. Obviously you guys are, are an example of success story on the web and it's great to see you know, Massachusetts based company kind of kicking the tires in the marketplace and, and doing well. But you got the profitability pretty fast, lean team, now you're scaling, growing. So give us the update on Cloud and, and uh, how you see this whole world. Sure. So. We're basically hitting, trying to hit the uh, inflection point right now. Um, we are trying to be the data layer for web apps. And when I say web apps, I really mean any app that has data. Um, you know, we have a, we're built on solid open source technology, uh, NoSQL, CouchDB, and we've been running, uh, we forked it, put Dynamo clustering into it two years ago. Uh, a couple of uh, MIT PhD physics students um, and they went through Y Combinator and they built a great service that we've been running at scale for two years. So I just posted a story, not to pivot too far off what the cloud and things doing, yep. I just wrote a story that Amazon just cut out the middleman with their cloud storage gateway. Um, so um, you find it a little weird that DynamoDB got a bunch of hype and AWS Storage got a small press release? Uh, no, because it's, we, first of all, I want to say that we welcome DynamoDB into the market because now we actually have some, a competitor and we love competitors, and uh, we love to mix it up. And it's, we just see it as one big validation. Also, the uh, technical response to uh, DynamoDB has been somewhat interesting. You know, it'll be interesting to see what ac the actual pricing comes out to, the actual benchmarks that it comes out. Um, you know, we didn't have much success running um, our initial public clusters on AWS because of random outages, so that's why we moved off to and partnered with SoftLayer. As far as their kind of focus, I'm really not surprised that DynamoDB got more coverage because uh, Dynamo, the Dynamo white paper that they published years ago was really the first big NoSQL clustering paper that got a lot of traction, and it's named after that, so they like so it. So talk about your team at Cloudin right now. What's the makeup of the, of the core team, and, uh, and then let's talk about the market opportunity you guys have. Sure, so the core team, we're about 12 employees right now. Uh, it's traditionally been purely uh, Erlang gurus, um, really, really bright technical people, uh, some of which are from the Apache CouchDB committer team. Um, recently, we announced uh, Dark Shuttle as our CEO, and uh, we've been bringing on a few more people to build out our field and sales staff, and um, yeah. So let's talk about what it takes to compete in the market. Obviously you're here evangelizing out um, cloud, and you've got a table down there, great developer community uh, here, and kind of a business crowd, kind of a kind of perfect storm. It's not too much of a geek conference per se. You got JF Comp, which tickets will go on sale here pretty shortly, like today or tomorrow. Um, so it's kind of that crowd, but you guys have to compete. What is, and obviously joining with huge financing uh, is demonstrating that this, this fully integrated cloud, turnkey, making it simpler. What are you guys doing in that market opportunity? How are you competing? and your offering. How are we competing against joint? No, just in general, what's the market opportunity for you guys? What's your differentiation? What's your solution set? And what's your value proposition that you pitch to the customers? I mean, when, when we're talking to business people, which this conference primarily is, uh, we start to really talk about um, you know, removing the DBA role. And you know, it's not that the DBA role is going to disappear from monster.com. It's that we're trying to make it easier Oracle for- Oracle doesn't like that, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> uh, but you know, 
a lot of the people that we deal with uh, are running, Oracle. screaming, and crying <laughs> yeah. for Oracle, or you know, they just don't, they can't afford a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're trying to be that kind of uh, agnostic data layer for any application where you know we can go in your data center, you can talk to our private cloud, you can come into our data center if you want to, uh, you know. We've got everybody with from free accounts who don't care as much about latency to you know real-time bidding ad agencies where we've got you know we have to respond within milliseconds on the same uh, LAN. So it's uh, we, we are you onboarding developers primarily or businesses or both? What's your I mean because Joyent got that nice and Heroku made a killing by onboarding app developers and kind of prefabricating some of those resources. I mean, right now, as far as, if you want to talk about corporate strategy, it's not like we're going out there and whining and dining CTOs. Yeah, yeah you, know, you don't have the cash it, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, you know, we're really trying to focus Maybe a few on, Red Sox tickets, because they're in Love's Fenway, but. Uh, right, absolutely, you know. no, we are Patriots, uh, which we will be winning the Super Bowl, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. There's, we're really trying to go after developers now, and you know, high tech companies that are small, um, that being said, we weren't planning on going after enterprise, and yet enterprise has been knocking down our door. It's why they get it. They get it from a business prop, and they get it from a technical prop. Is it the scalability or the security? It's the scalability, but it's also the fact that we can get uh, updated, queryable data to their platform faster. Um, so, to use the technical talk. It's because we, CouchDB, even the open source version, has what's called incremental MapReduce. And this allows us to get you updated indexes within seconds instead of rebuilding your index over three days. So explain incremental MapReduce versus what people know about Hadoop and traditional MapReduce. What's the difference between the two? Right, so Hadoop, Mongo, any of these guys, even if you go to the SQLs, um, Basically, it could take you three hours or three days to build your index. That could be you know, primary key index, that could be any kind of index. You could be using Lucene. Um, incremental MapReduce, you have to do that initial large build of the index. After that, we are able to represent new updates to the primary data set into that index within seconds. And so that's, that's huge for analytics companies, business intelligence, really anybody who cares about data being fresh. So what, what do you think about nodes? Let's talk about Node Summit. Obviously Node.js is a rapid a, a rise in the, in the energy and the multiple communities kind of coming together. Node community is dynamic, it's respectful uh, and, and very professional developers. Um, what's your take of this and opportunity for Node? Well, I think Node is just going to keep growing. It's, it's one of those things where JavaScript is extremely accessible. You know, it's going to be interesting because PHP seemed to have gone through a very similar life cycle. It was extremely accessible, people started to standardize on it, and so it's going to be interesting to see over the next, let's say, year, to see if the, um, the pool just gets really crowded. You know, PHP didn't do a good job of managing all the people who wanted to get on the bandwagon. Um, and I love PHP, I still code in PHP, but you know, not many people can claim to be good at PHP. <laughs> There's a lot of bad people on it. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the community kind of handles that. Yeah. Okay, we're here with uh, Sam Bisbee from Cloudant, a great growing company, um, classic success story. And it's kind of an East Coast success story, although they have a maverick investor in Rich Levendorf uh, from Avalon Ventures, also invested in Zynga, um, and a lot of the big you know, web companies, so he knows, he's been around the block on, uh, for many, many cycles. Um, so you got a really strong investor, great validation, uh, self-finance, well not self, well self-finance, some seed, uh, Y Combinator success story. Um, congratulations on your success, and, uh, and uh, good luck with everything. Great to come on theCUBE.